Hey guys, Nirvana Sparkle here, and it's been a long time since I've had anything to really rant about. You see, I'm not an angry person. I do not deal with hate. I love positivity, and I love to inspire. After all, that is kind of my job. But, you see, there are some people on YouTube that take positivity and turn it into stupidity. Most notably, Hot 97 FM's The Hip Hop Gamer. Why am I bringing up this jabroni that I've never brought up before? Why? Because he said something stupid about the video game critic industry. Now, I am not a fan of the video game media. In fact, I don't consider myself video game media. I consider myself a freelance journalist slash analyzer. And I consider our channel as such. But, he went on an attack based on the video game The Order 1886. You know, that game that on YouTube had a five hour let's play and was ripped and teared to shreds by other reviewers in the actual media. IGN giving it a 6.2, GameSpot giving it a 5, and GamesRadar giving it a 2.5 out of 5, with only game trailers being the only generous one giving it an 8.5. But you see, the Bob Gamer was so sick and tired of the pre-release hate that he unleashed a 20-minute tirade. But why am I mad about it? Why? Because he brought up the racism card. Yes, he put pre-release hate and hatred towards, towards anybody refusing to buy a game as a form of racism. That's right. He lengthened your ability to buy a game to colored bathrooms, to being left on the back side of the bus, you know, racism. Now, real life Bobby Gamer, let me first, for disclosure, I am a black man. 31, in fact, just recently. I don't consider people not wanting to buy video games racism. In fact, I consider it freedom of choice. And in most situations, I would actually fall on the side of caution, caution and say not to pre-order most modern day video games. One, because they are definitely not worth your money. And two, because... Who knows, you might have not believed in what I said in my previous city I went about facts of a buggy life. And you might actually not want to buy more games because of the fact that video games will probably in this video game generation be a buggy battered mess to each his own. Where I come into the problem with Mr. Gamer's discussion, which, by the way, I will have a link to that 20-minute racist diatribe in the description. I don't usually do that, but I feel in the honor of full disclosure to give you that. He started bashing on video game media, video game critics, guys like you and I, saying that we do not have the right to be negative or constructively critical about video games, especially when video games aren't released yet. Mr. Gamer, a critic's job is to look out for the safety and the well-being and the well-buying process of the consumer. It's our job 
not to act as the end all be all, but to act as the trusted source, the friend as you will, to a gamer that is on the fence about buying a video game. Yes, they should not trust our words as God. On that notion, you are correct. If you trust me as a god, if you trust Jim Sterling as a god, or any video game reviewer as the absolute final say in your purchase to a video game, you sirs and madams are doing it wrong. But, it is not wrong to get second or third opinions. It's like going to a doctor. When you go to a doctor, sometimes that doctor may not know how to diagnose you. So you go to another, and another, and another. And that's kind of how critical reviews work. We go to one doctor to hear one opinion. We go to another doctor to hear another opinion, and so on and so forth. To gain a general consensus... And by the way, that's what critics are here for in any industry. To generate a general consensus on any media. Not to be the end all be all, but to give one opinion in a thousand. So that the consumer can make a smart educated decision on their next video game purchase. Now, I for one do not own a PlayStation 4, nor will I ever, unless you pay me through my Twitch account, then I may, because I have a history with Sony, a bad one, that I won't get into, but, from what I hear about the Order 1886, it's Average, if not below average, of a video game, just based on the critic consensus. Now, if you are a fan of that game, please tell me in the comment section below and why you are a fan of that particular game. Game, and please be as detailed as possible in this. But the Order 1886 and its negative attention isn't because of racism. No, Hip Hop Gamer, it is because the value of a game. Ever heard the expression, learning the value of a dollar? Well, if you've heard that expression before, then you know why most modern day video gamers are upset at the modern day video game developer and the modern day video game publisher. Because it seems in this day and age that the developer, hard working as they are, and yes, I do acknowledge that they are hard working working men and women that are trying to protect their jobs at any way possible. But, it is also our job as gamers to hold those developers to the respective fire when it is needed be. But you see, the reason why you bring up the value of a dollar is because most video game developers, and especially most video game publishers don't understand that the value of a dollar in a video gamer's life is completely subjective. For me, for instance, I equivalent one hour of time in a video game as equivalent to one dollar of U.S. money. So, by that estimation, just using my favorite Xbox One game, Killer Instinct, as an example, I have played that game for a total of 88 hours. I have spent $80 on Killer Instinct, buying both the Ultra Combo Season Passes. By that notion, I am now $8 up based on my own theory. For others, it's multiplayer gameplay, which in the case of The Order has none, which has a lot of gamers already on the negative side, seeing that there isn't a lot of sing 
a lot of replayability or a multiplayer mode to extend the game's life. Something that video gamers in this modern day and age have gotten used to and now consider standardized. That's where part of the problem comes in. Another part of the problem is its anticlimactic ending and its two hour use of cutscenes. That's where a lot of the hate for the Order 1886 comes from. Not because people do not want to buy the game or to be told not to, it is because the product does not understand the value of a gamer's dollar. There isn't enough time being spent in the game world to justify the $60 price that is being asked. Nor, nor for the gamer that is in multiplayer, are they getting zero amount of time given to their respective hobbies or any online connections can be established through online plays or chats during games. So, there is no value there. And with no DLC, there is no extended value to look forward to thus now yet. That's why you're getting a lot of the don't buy it for $60 in the crowd. But, it is our job as critics not to tell them how to feel, not to tell them what to feel. It is to tell them what they are getting. We, as critics, are information gatherers. It is our job through our own opinions on each individual game, not to sway a gamer in a certain direction, but, but to inform them about what they are getting, what they are buying, or in the case of this channel, by most chances, what are they watching, or experiencing, or what they need to maybe think about, as the case may be. Not to tell them directly that this should be what you do. And to equivalent it to racism is where my anger comes from. To equivalent it to racism means that modern day video games are no different and the battle for gamers rights are no different than the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Now granted, let me state this for the record. I am not a gamer gator. I am not an anti gamer gator. I am neutral. In fact, on an offshoot, I think the whole gamer gate notion is a load of crock. But I'll just leave it at that. I I am rather an advocate for the consumer and consumer rights. I would like it, however, if most gamers had enough foresight not to pre-order a game or not, not to buy one in haste, but to use the power of the internet to inform themselves on whether to make a smart buying decision. And don't just buy it on developer diaries or trailers alone. Buy it on research. Analyst. You know, things in the trailer. Things you may hear. Random interviews. Use any information. As well as the review when the game comes out. If you are still yet undecided... Remember, that's who reviews are for. Reviews are not for the absolute going to buy it crowd and not for the absolute not going to buy it crowd. Reviews are for the middle. The ones that have not made a decision are still wondering if the decision are worth it. And if enough people in the consensus media agree that the game's worth buying, maybe it's worth swaying them to maybe give it a shot. Although, I would stress to the modern day video gamer, not even to do that. Instead, use systems like Redbox and Gamefly to be even on the safer tip. 
and that would be what I would suggest based on my knowledge of the Order 1886. Game flight instead. It may be safer. But you do not have the right, Mr. Hip Hop Gamer, to equivalent it to racism, nor do you have the right to tell people to be more positive. The reason why gamers are asking so much of developers is because of the very notion that you brought up in your own conversation when you brought up Super Mario Brothers and how it worked out of the box. That is what most modern gamers are arguing about and fighting against with developers. The fact that most games don't even come out one third of what they're initially promised or asked for, and some of which are filled with millions upon thousands of technical bugs, some of which are game breaking in nature that can ruin the course and the enjoyment of one's video games which then takes away that time which then wastes their money that is what gamers are arguing about yes I understand that it's going to be a fact of modern day games I do not I do not with this video go against my earlier rant I still believe it is going to be a fact of life that we are going to have to deal with incredibly buggy games. But that does not mean that we should bow down to our overlords and automatically give in and give their money out of the sense of sympathy or support for these developers. Yes, if we want to give positive support which obviously that's your key point to be more positive it's instead of us saying well let's just buy our game to be sympathetic why not ask for a beta or maybe ask for two or maybe ask for three and if even after all that the game still comes out a buggy, battered mess. Maybe we should do as Review Tech USA has said. And yes, this is a response to both of those videos. Hurt them with their wallet. Yes, Rich, I am on your side. The Equestrian Nation has your back on this one, Richie boy. Well, a few things, Rich, that I disagree with on your channel. In fact, a lot of things I disagree with on your channel. But this is not one of them. I'm on your side. Critics should not ever, by any circumstance, become salesmen for the video game industry. Yes, we can do a lot to sell a video game, but it is not our job to sell a video game. It is our job to sell information, to inform them on what exactly a sale they're making. And if people want to pre-sale, which is exactly what pre-orders are, their video games to each their own but do not, by any circumstances, do that with stupidity. Video gamers in the modern day need to understand the greatest weapon that they can wield in this modern day video game age is information. Because information can stretch a value of a dollar. And if you, the gamer, do not understand your own, not a critics, not hip hop gamers, not even mine. If you do not understand the value of a dollar and you need someone to tell you that value, then yes, you are being chibi-seed. You are being sold something like an auto salesman. Do not let the video game industry sell you your love of games. Instead, let your information 
be the deal breaker in this situation. Video game criticism is not racism. It's being informative. And the minute that we as critics stop being informative is the minute this industry, like any other industry that was failed to be critical, dies. Hip Hop Gamer, here's the deal. If you want to be a positivity salesman, there's many other places you can go. Video games are not one of them. And as a black person yourself, to pull out the race card in terms of my job, in terms of millions of other YouTubers' jobs, in reference to a game that just this Tuesday came out, you do not have the right to criticize us. Our job is to bring the information, to be informed. And if people believe in us so deeply that our information is golden to them, that is their own decision. It doesn't give you the right to call them racist or stupid. If we want the video game industry to change, we have to be willing to tell them that they're doing something wrong. Find peace in your own nirvana. Thanks for watching.